My name is uh, William Leach, and this is my story. So I was born in December of 1979 in a town called Abilene, Texas. Um, just a poor old country boy, you know. Um, <clears throat> Dad moved around a lot. He was good. He was around, but, you know, his work dictated uh, where he went, and most of the time we followed. Um, just to wrap that up, not much going on in that portion. In uh, the early, early 90s, maybe late 80s, 89, 90, we moved to where I was basically raised, which was North Texas. It was a town called Reno. It was in Parker County, and the address said Azel. So, I don't know if you, you tell me. but it's kind of, Oh, and I also went to Springtown High School, so get confused with that. But... Uh, poor country boy, um, but love and life mostly, good parents, um, everything fairly normal, you know, never had a new bike, but that was okay, I didn't know the difference, you know, my next door neighbor didn't have a new one either, so went on from there, grow up, just being, uh, you know, I have uh, two brothers, one older, one younger, that may explain a lot, I'm the middle boy. Um, so from there, just high school, regular stuff, you know, trying to get a girlfriend, um, tough things, and went on and graduated on time and things of that nature, fairly good, um, maybe not, I was, uh, fairly active in the church, I, uh, the pastor let me preach several times in the in that church that was Walnut Creek Baptist Church in Reno, Texas, and you know, living fairly straight lifestyle, doing the best I could as far as that. Um, to go back, I was saved at the age of 13. I missed that, I should have mentioned that, but uh, 13, and I got saved because we were living. My dad was a drinker, smoker type guy, and when I was 13, he changed his life and he did a 180 or 360 or however you want to describe it and man i just saw the difference and i knew it was real because what had happened can't be fake and man so excuse me i get a little emotional at times uh post-traumatic stress we'll get to that in a minute it doesn't help the situation but so i saw the change in the life at, at 13 and i got saved and i and it was real, and it's been real to this day. But the problem was, is when I graduated, I oh, Dad said, you got you got uh, three months to get a job, a real job. I, I you know, I worked here and there. And then uh, six months to get out because I wasn't going to go to college. And um, for whatever reason, who knows? I mean, not thinking straight, I guess. And uh, so I got a job immediately, a good job, Buckner Mack Trucks, part salesman, uh, shipping and receiving at first, but there, decent job. I got an apartment within the first three months, actually, not six months, and uh, just kept trucking along. I got a, uh, I was a, guess a youth pastor at a um, missionary Baptist church in Saginaw, Texas, or actually Blue Mound, I believe. And that's when things got dicey. Because um, me and my father were doing a, a, a ministry in a nursing home, and it was going really well. But I, for some reason, thought that this was more important. And I don't know, and I can't remember necessarily if I put enough thought into it, but I went on that track. And, of course, I was a single young man and teaching teenagers. Now, I never did anything out of the rules, but I got sidetracked. And um, before I know it, I wasn't going to church anymore. And I didn't care. And I was just living a bachelor lifestyle and having fun as far as that realm went and not knowing where to go. Well, I ended up having too much fun with a few things you shouldn't use and 
kind of got shifted out of my job. And I was running away from a girl who didn't want me to run away from. And I ended up with my uncle in a town called Rio Vista, Texas. And that's where I went to work for him and it didn't make much money and it was living low, low lifestyle. And I was with uh, pretty my best friend to this day, uh, my cousin, first cousin, his son. And we were doing AC work and we ended up at a Marine Corps recruit center doing their AC. And the whole time, those guys are clever, the whole time he was recruiting us while we were fixing his AC, unbeknownst to us, we joined the next day. And it took a couple of months and a lot of, I was out of shape. I was 22 and not doing nothing but working AC and drinking beer. I don't know if I can say that on here, but I did. And um, I cleaned up, started running, got back in shape, um, headed off. So we left, we left November the 10th, 2002, graduated in, man, I should know that day, it's 13 weeks long, graduated in February, and I was 23, so my birthday was in boot camp, not, not my greatest birthday, um, and I kept it quiet so nobody even noticed, uh, and then got out, headed to did, you know, the trainings and the things like that, and then headed to Okinawa. Uh, did a year or so in there, joined up to stay with my buddies, and uh, we, went to, we went to Iraq. I should be able to say the word without, anyway. So, went there, um, did what we, what we, were asked to do, fought the fight, um, I get more emotional what happened to the other guys than to myself, um, but most of y'all know that I was injured, I got hit, um, believe it or not, on uh, Veterans Day, I got blown up with RP, uh, RPG shrapnel. I got my left arm and inside my right shoulder, it's still in my right shoulder to today. Um, I had 13 pounds of explosives on my back at the time. Luckily, it didn't hit that. Um, not necessarily know if it could explode. It takes heat and pressure. That's a whole different uh, chapter we could go over if anybody wants to know how explosives work. Um, but well, I went through that. Um, and then the hospital was probably the hardest part because it wasn't a pretty place. Had some really close friends. And I know this is uh, kind of on Memorial Day-ish. And, uh, you know, I just wish their families the most pray for them all the time. It's a hard thing for somebody to lose somebody like that. If... at that age, you know, and um, uh, one of my biggest regrets is, and I have uh, come along since then, but um, I never really even thanked God at the time that I, that I made it through it, you know, and, and I don't know why, uh, kind of bitter at the time, and I don't know why on that either, but I pushed through and, and um, thank God every day now that that he did so much in my life through it and passed it. And I really, I really, you know, just being selfish at that time and, and thinking of just me and, and um, as the years passed, I had uh, developed post-traumatic stress, as you can tell. And, you know, he sent, I believe this to this day, he sent Crystal in my life, and she really just helped me move past it. I mean, it, she didn't know how to, but she pulled it off anyways through the, uh, you know, the grace of Jesus Christ and, and just, uh, just helped us 
And, uh, you know, we really, at first we really weren't living the life of God. We got married quick. I actually got married to her while I was in a, at a reserve space in Fort Worth getting processed out. And she, you know, she just stuck with me and, and just helped me immensely. And I thank God every day for that. And, and uh, we got through that course and we had Violet in 2009. And we kind of said to each other, you know, we need to do this right. We need to give Violet a chance because we weren't living in church and we weren't living that life. And we were both Christians, not living like Christians and uh, not living for Jesus. And then we decided to start going. And uh, <clears throat> it took a while and we kept bouncing around from churches and kept trying. And then um, my father passed in 2012, which was really hard on me. I was really close to him. and uh, But at the same time, believe it or not, while he was dying in the hospital, he died probably the next day, the city of Texas City called me and uh, asked me for an interview. And we knew he was going, so I said, you know what, sure. And uh, came down. I, I asked him to wait a little bit. I kind of explained the situation. They said, okay. Um, we, uh, we went in there and, you know, they offered me the job. We said, you know, why not? We needed, we needed kind of a break. We prayed about it. It was quite a bit more money. Came down here and we started searching churches. We couldn't find them. And, um, excuse me. Um, uh, we were living in an apartment in Texas City. And uh, uh, it took us a while to find the house. We found a house in Santa Fe. We started looking at churches in Santa Fe. We hit up Arcadia. And man, loved it. And still love it to this day. Appreciate everybody in here. So much uh, support and love. And and just, and just feel God almost every time I walk in here. And I, and I absolutely love it. And I guess... That kind of wraps it up, but the moral is, is, is uh, everybody gets off track, right? And sometimes we forget what we should be living for, but Jesus has got us, and he's always there to pull you through it. And, um, you know, you ever need anybody to pray with, uh, need something for me to pray for, I, I I would love to, and um, just for all those families uh, who have lost somebody, uh, speaking of this, just, you know, who fought for our country, I'm with you, and, uh, and I'm trying not to do this when we talk, but I'd love to talk to you about it, and um, just be there for you, because I know it isn't easy. So um, I just appreciate this time to just even to let this out.